Hello, Davina here and welcome to another tutorial from UsefulGraphicDesignTutorials.com In today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this shiny button. We're going to put some gradient on it, do a bit of blurring and add the text. I shall get rid of this so that we can get on with the work. Okay, the page I have got here I'm going to use and it's going to be 500 pixels by 250 and that's going to be the size of the button. But of course we've got to draw the button and we will use the rectangle tool and draw inside that. I've obviously done an orange one. We want to make the corners rounded, so click on the node tool and the little circle here, click and drag. Next we're going to change the colour and I'm going to show you how to match up the hexadecimal number. What's that you ask? I'll show you. Select it, go up to fill and stroke and we're in RGB and down here you'll see RGBA and it should come up as the hexadecimal. It's the colour number. Every colour has got a number. And I've looked at the green, uh, taken the details, so I'm going to put it in now. And that's the green. Before we do anything with that, I'm going to duplicate this because I want to blur it for a bit of background definition. So if you remember to duplicate, edit, duplicate or control D. I'm going to move it out of the way. We'll come back to this one and take in the gradient tool. I'm going to make a simple gradient by clicking and dragging upwards. I want much lighter at the top because the light is shining down. You can do it various ways until you... Yes, I like that. In comes the edit tool, thank goodness. I should have clicked first. Oh, we got it back, thank goodness for that. Right, so I'm going to bring in this bigger one, but I'm going to reduce it to, let's see, I'm going to put it in there. Let's see about that. Okay, now we're going to blur it, so up to it's selected up to fill and shape and down to blur and as we looked at before play around with it of course the bigger the number the bigger the blur and well, I think 40 I found was quite good we accept that and I'm just going to move it down slightly but be careful if you do it too much you can see it's underneath and I don't want that. That should be fine. Next we're going to put some text in. So click on the text tool, which is the A, on the canvas. And I'm going to put type in click me. I'm going to change the text because I don't want the default, which is sans. So have it selected and go up to the text palette. And it, as I say, it defaults to sans. Go through, choose whichever you want. But I found I liked the rounded, aerial rounded. So click apply and it changes it down here. I'm going to pop that in there and size it up. To fit in the middle. I think the black is too harsh so I want to change the colour of that's going there's going to be two uh, text objects if you like um, so I'm going to change the colour to a dark green a little subtler um, blending with the button. I'm also going to duplicate this text so control D and I'm going to give it a light colour, that too. That's, yes, that's quite good. And then using the up arrow, 
I'm just going to move it up so you get the background one coming through for a bit of definition. To check if that looks okay, I'm going to zoom in. Yes, I think that looks fine. But what I want to do is join the two text objects together because if you move something, of course, they get out of line. So the way to do that is to select one. So I'll select the top one first and then holding shift key down, select the back one. And you can see there's the jagged lines. There's two sets of jagged lines. So you know that both of those two objects have been selected. And then go up to this icon here or control G and click and they've both been selected and you can check that by moving like that. Uh, let's come zoom out. I think it needs to come down a little bit and that's your shiny button. Quite simple I think. At some point we could well put a reflection on the bottom here but I'm not going to do that now that will be a later tutorial. Well we've finished the button and remember obviously to save it first of all in save as as a dot svg and then you could come back at any stage and save it as a PNG for whatever you want to use it for. I hope you found it useful and if you've got any comments, any questions, we'd love to hear from you and if you just go to the fan page, the details will be below and we look forward to hearing from you. Until the next video then, bye bye for now.